1976 when it was created. Ondo State has had different leaders, both military and civilian, with different leadership styles. On the 24th day of February 2017 was another milestone in the political history of Ondo State. I, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, do solemnly swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria and that I will preserve, protect and defend the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So help me God. The assumption of office by Arakuri Oluwaro Timi Akere Dulu S.A.N. as the sixth democratically elected governor on that unique day left no one in doubt that the overborn legal luminary would give his best for the state. Two years on, the Akere Dulu administration has brought a paradigm shift to governance with its popular Think Anew, Act Anew mantra. Before taking the oath, Arakuri Akere Dulu, as a visionary leader, had assembled the best brains in the land to fashion out a development blueprint tagged Journey to Redemption, which clearly spelled out five cardinal programs, otherwise known as JMPPR. But as a wise and compassionate leader, he knew outrightly that for him to achieve these laudable cardinal programs, he has to do something as a matter of urgency about the demoralized workforce he met while he assumed office. The civil servants, which are the engine room of any administration, were being owed seven months' salaries. Despite the daunting challenges of paucity of funds, the government has put smiles on their faces. Presently, the workers are enjoying robust welfare package, regular payment of salaries, as well as promotion as and when due. Well, I believe that um, we have gone in these two years, we have gone through all the motions of uh, being in an office. Uh, you know, there have been ups, there have been downs. But uh, with whatever we see, uh, what we saw, we want to give glory to Almighty God for seeing us through. And I believe that um, from what is on ground, I'm sure that the people of the state have every reason to thank Almighty God for these two years that we have been in the saddle. Uh, we. We have, we, have, we have tried, I mean, to give our best. But I believe that the generality of the people of Ondo State uh, uh, will give uh, at least their own assessment of what has been done. Governor Kiti is a messiah sent to the public service of Ondo State. Because my interest as head of service is the public service, the welfare of workers. He has promoted the interest of public servants and its more than any other government in the history of Ondo State. It came at a very critical time, a time when there was despair, a time when the hope of living was uh, almost being dashed. It came at a time when civil servants in the history of Ondo State were owed seven months of broken salaries. To God be the glory, he has substantially cleared the outstanding salaries of public servants in Ondo State. It's one of the few state governments uh, done promotion to date as I went deep. We have all received 
our letters of promotion for 2018 and the machinery for promotion in 2019 have been set in motion. This is commendable. He had not retrenched any civil servant. In spite of this very critical economic situation in Nigeria. Within two years in office, the indefatigable governor of Ondo State, Arakuri Oluwarotimi Akeredolu, has meticulously followed the JMPPR, that is, the five cardinal programs in developing the land and the people of the state. For many years of its existence, Odo State has remained an Algerian state, but in the last two years, the Akere Dolu administration has been working frantically to ensure that agriculture is given its rightful place as a fulcrum to grow the non-oil economy of the state, thus creating thousands of jobs for the teeming youths. We still have our hands on the plough when it comes to job creation. It's not something that come by sudden flight. It is something that you needed to plan. And we had used the first year or half year to make the planning. We are gonna add to get a number of people recruited, particularly in the agricultural sector. We have had uh, the youth of the regions, we have had people who are graduates who are now working. The only way out is agriculture. It's just the only way we can employ many people that take care of our youth and get them taken out of the street. That's why the government came up with the program with the religious. We are looking of taking the youth out of the street, about 1,000 in each local government. We are about 18 local government. We are looking at about 18,000 youth. They are not only even taking them out, but are going to put them in modern day farming, farming processes. They are going to take them across the agriculture value chain. It's not only in farming, maybe in livestock, packaging, distribution, export, and even engineering. So it's not only farming, it's, it's across, across the value chain of agriculture. We are looking at a uh, estate approach, estate farming approach, and that is what we have started at Jubere, where we are working on 2,000 hectares, just a single estate, and the 2,000 hectares is going to accommodate 500 youth at 44 hectares each. We are strongly convinced that by the time they manage their, five, their, their four hectares professionally, they, their standard of living will be better than some, that of somebody on grade level 14. In the areas of industrialization and entrepreneurship, Governor Akere Dolu is collaborating with different local and foreign investors to develop industrial parks which will accommodate a chain of companies and other wealth creating avenues across the state. On the industrialization, many people have been appointed now or gotten job in few of the industries that we have been able to at least uh, midwife in these two years. But many more of them are yet to come upstream and they, they will be coming very, very soon. Where we have our the Ondoli Industrial Park, uh, we had problems uh, majorly in terms of energizing the industrial park. We were counting 
on your motor show uh, plant and we have gone back and forth with TCN even seeking uh, Niger Delta Power Holding to assist but a number of these things has not gelled. About four industries, about 95% completed. The only one running for now there is the textile industry. People have been employed and they are working there. The, the powder egg, which is supposed to have assisted us in getting more people off the streets, had its own e -cups. But I must say the, to the people of Ondo State, we have surmounted that now. And uh, immediately after the election, the powder egg industry in uh, Emirelli, the construction works and co will start in NS because all necessary funds needed for that industry has been uh, sorted out now. So we're looking up to that. So industrialization, we talk about agriculture, entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, we have had a few people too who have, we have uh, tried to grow in becoming an ent entrepreneurs. In order to explore and exploit the abundant natural resources, many of which have remained untapped, the state government has signed many memoranda of understanding with developing partners in the bid to turn around the fortune of the state. In the area of massive infrastructural development and maintenance, in the last two years, Arakuri has obviously turned the Sunshine State into a giant construction site as he is opening up new access road networks in the Interland. He is also reconstructing dilapidated roads across the nooks and crannies of the state as dual carriageways are being provided where it has become necessary. Bridges have also been constructed where they have become very important. Star projects like the Okiala Bojuto in the Karea Koko in the Northern Senatorial District and the Ore flyover on the ever busy federal government owned Bini Ore Expressway in the Southern Senatorial District upon completion will not only save lots of lives and man hours but also boost the state's economy. When it comes to massive infrastructure development and maintenance, you, I mean, it's something for the eye to see. It's not anything that anybody can bobo or try to deceive anybody. You can go around the whole state. Uh, we, we, we have uh, tried our best. And uh, when people say to me that uh, it's not a usual thing in less than two years to have this infrastructural uh, development, and I said, well, fair enough. I, I have appreciated the infrastructural deficit and I believe that something has to be done and uh, we, are going, uh, we are going about it with everything we have and we have to be frugal. We needed a buy-in of a number of our contractors. I must note their cooperation and uh, so with them cooperating and with us trying to manage the little form we have, I'm sure that at the end of the day by the time we are through with the first three years, the whole landscape of the state will have changed look at what we are doing in Oluka, what we are doing in Akure, look at what we are doing in Donne, look at what we are doing in SL, look at what we are doing on uh, for the flyover in uh, Ore. If you count the number of casualties that we have recorded from that junction, that Ore Lagos Expressway is something that everybody wants to mention flyover. That has been a dream of all of us. If you are not bold, and the next part driver for you to even cross that place is, 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 is another uh, tension. But we are already trying to see how we can cross the bridge, do a flyover. If you are coming from, if you are going from Mainland to Bokoda, to Orena, once you get to an NPC junction there, there's going to be a flyover that will take you across the road to Orena. What this government has achieved, we need the last. 23 months is unprecedented. The past administrations, they tried their best, but none of them, I mean none, has achieved what they achieved within two years, in four years, none of them. From Northern Central District, Central, Southern Central District, 
we are working everywhere. And most of those projects during the first year anniversary were completed and delivered. Within the first year to second year now, so many have been completed and most of our staff projects now, they are ongoing. You can see the level of achievement recorded. Going through the stage, you see that the governor has been able to touch every local government and mostly 90% of major towns in this stage have been touched by Arakone. And that gives us the boldness to say no governor has done what he has done within two years of, his, of this administration. Ondo State, under the leadership of Arakuri Uluwarotimi Akere Dulu, has lived up to his billings in promoting functional education and technological growth. One of the first areas in which the Akere Dulu administration has and is still intervening is the primary education sector. Before 2017, almost everything in the primary schools across the state was in shambles. But the transformational mindset of Arakuri Akere Dulu has since turned the tide. To make school more functional, we have decided to start with primary school. We are doing massive renovation in all the primary schools. We are making the schools safer. We are providing toilets so that the hygienic aspect of it meets a lot. So that's why you can see that thousands of schools all around the state today wear a new look because of our own approach to make education functional. Since Arakurin came in, as soon as he even won the election, he put up a committee to look into the education sector. And that committee recommended what should be done in our basic education schools. And they actually recommended that we should, have, we should renovate all the dilapidated structures and construct new ones for schools that need them. And Arakuni bring a man that loves education and believes that the foundation must be very firm for us to have meaningful thing on top of it. He went and decided to make basic education one that can be envied by other states. Also, the secondary and tertiary education subsectors have received adequate attention from the Akiri Dulu government since inception. The secondary schools that we are trying to look at too, and a lot of things have been done. And if we talk about functional education, that's why we had made a case for our three universities, the tertiary institutions, about uh, three universities plus the polytechnic. Uh, we, we, we are trying our best to, to get those ones more functional today. A number of courses in uh, OSU's tech has been uh, accredited. A number of courses also in uh, Unimed have been accredited. More buildings are coming up. Uh, we are trying to, to make sure that we have the teaching hospital for, for Unimed. So, the issue of education is key to us and uh, the little we have been to do at least a could show to people that look we believe in functionality of education and that's what we are pursuing. In the health sector, the Ondo State Government has left no stone unturned in promoting accessible and qualitative health care and social service delivery. What we needed are hospital equipment and we needed a waiver. We needed that waiver before we can get an import license and co. It took some time. It's normal. It's normal. We have it already. Then we attended to a look issue of money. They are not going to send the equipment for free. We got the money and we have remitted the money to them. We are waiting. This is going to go by sea. There is no way anybody can cargo by air all this uh, medical equipment. We are talking about 40 feet uh, uh, container loads, about close to about 25 or 40 of them. So they are coming. It is for us to equip our medical facilities and make sure that 
people, when they get there, they get the nursing care. The Akiridula administration has equally scaled up rural development and community extension services. The Kamumi Aketi Rural Water Scheme, which the federal government has adopted as model for other states to copy, has brought relief to rural dwellers in over 800 communities. The whole essence of Kamumi is, as, uh, is uh, to make water available for the 3,259 communities in Ondo State. When we came on board, the water access in Ondo State was a disaster. It was just 4%. And the, the governor came up with the creatively crafted Kamomi Akiti on the 12th of March 2018. And he gave us a machine order to go on massive rehabilitation of non functional boreholes in Ondo State. He said the program should be three in one. As we go from local government to local government, we should do evaluation and critical assessment of the situation we met on ground and on the spot repair as a rapid response to the problem, to the calling of Ondo State people in the area of uh, water uh, supply. And to the glory of God, we've been on the, uh, on the road since 12th of March from local government to local government. To the glory of God, we've gone to nine local governments are sat today and the work is still going on. We've been able to repair the about 900 boreholes as of today and the water access in Ondo State has increased from 4% to 23.7% by statistics as at uh, December 2018. says no development can take place without peace and security. The Akiri Dulu administration has deemed it fit to redesign the security architecture of the state so as to make the state a safe haven for the people and investors. No doubt, relatively, Ondo State is still one of the safest states in this country. Relatively. It's even the safest because we, since we are oil producing and, and not much, Look at our riverine area, we have been able to cop all those SSAs about militants and co. And I uh, want to thank the commanding officer there for the great work they are doing. I mean, you know, all we had to do was to support them. We have supported the naval base. They can confirm to you. I even got a letter from them uh, of uh, appreciation for what we are doing. We supplied them with uh, speedboats. And we also supported the police and the military here, yeah? and uh, we gave several patrol vans to them to make sure that they are able to react, particularly when they are called on any of these emergencies, and uh, at least all normal patrols, not necessarily on emergencies. So, because of the kidnapping, I, I, I feel so worried. I feel bad that it came up. In, 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 in a manner that was going to paint the state in, in bad light because of the rapidity. But I want to say that now the military with Egweke, the police, all the uh, security agencies working together, they have been able to curb it at least to the barest minimum, we have not had it for some time now. I, I think uh, Ondo State is safe. So all we are able to do is continue to support our security agencies for, for them to deliver uh, on their own mandates. Akira Dudu led executive 
has also enjoyed a robust cooperation from the legislative arm of the government. With the little that Akete has gotten from the federal government, he utilizes judiciously, prudently. He managed it as expected. You know, I've told you he's a very honest person. If you are working with honest person, how little the phone may be, he will use it. So far, so good in terms of road, social, hurt, sincerely speaking, I can give him kudos. The office of the wife of the governor has also complemented efforts of the government through different empowerment programs for the women folk. For us, it's about all the nooks and crannies of understate. In the areas they think they can fit in. Because when we talk about women empowerment, we need to make our women realize that the empowerment is, is to make their life better. It's to make sure that their source of income is improved. It's to make sure that their scope of knowledge about things happening around them is widened. In all areas of endeavors, every woman in this state would partake in the good governance of Arakuri administration. By and large, the present administration in Ondo state has left no one in doubt that it means well for the people. There's reason for people to be happy with this government. And I can assure you that what I will spend four years in office we will leave on those states better than we meant it. To a great people in those state, I, I want to assure you of one thing that we are here to serve you. I will continue to give our best. Just as we said in one of the quotes that goes around. Doing our best for you is a worthy cause all the time. And uh, I want to thank you. In the last two years, I've enjoyed your support. I, I believe that uh, without that, we won't have achieved anything. So I, I want to continue to count and pray for your cooperation as we move ahead. Uh, we'll get to the promised land, quote unquote. I'm sure that at the end of the day, all of us we thank God for what he has done in the state. For a government that was confronted with paucity of funds upon assumption of office and already has this catalogue of achievements to display in two years, it is certain that Arakuri Oluwarotimi Akiridolu S.A.N. will ensure that the sun keeps rising in the Sunshine State.